Good morning, everyone. It is a pleasure to be with you again this morning. I hope everyone is uh, well, had a faith-filled week. I know it's been a difficult week for many, and we will continue to stand in faith and trust. We talked last week about Proverbs 3, 5, trusting in the Lord with all of your heart and leaning not to your own understanding. There are so many things that we won't understand right now, but the one thing God says is to trust. Go with me, if you would, to Psalm 91. In verse 1, it says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I remember last summer we have a, a bunch of free-range chickens that love to run around and eat and carry on, and, and uh, we love feeding them every morning. And one morning there was a, a chicken out there that was a little far off that she just wouldn't come in for what Sandra and I were going to give them for their morning bread and so we brought the food to them and when we to her sorry and when we got there we found that she had been brooding and there was all these beautiful little chicks underneath her wings and she was protecting them no matter what the cost i'm reminded of that as i read this scripture today it says my god in whom will i trust those little chicks were trusting in their mom as she covered them she wouldn't move for anything matter of fact i literally had to lift her up to see what was going on only to find all the little chicks that were surrounded underneath her in verse 3 of psalm 91 it says surely he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler from the perilous pestilence he will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will take refuge his truth shall be your shield and your buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, or by the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness. Truly, this virus is a pestilence that walks in darkness. I believe as a Christian, we have authority over that. And part of that authority is trusting in God, trusting that he will shield you and protect you. But I've been asked many questions this week, and the one thing that I want to encourage everyone is don't interpret the word or what God says based on your circumstance, but take God's word and place that against your circumstance. So what I mean by that is sometimes we look at the circumstances and we try and explain why or how or who, but the one thing I know that we were told to do in this circumstance is to take God at his word and speak to that storm, speak to that situation that is coming up in your life and declare peace. He said that we're not to be afraid by the terror at night. You know, the word says that he gives his beloved sweet sleep. Isaiah 26, it says, He will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on God. It is so easy to get swayed over into, you know, we're just going to focus completely on the circumstance or what is going on. But we know that that's not God's best. God's best is to Keep your eyes on him. Stay under the shadow of the Almighty. Pretend just like that chicken that was brooding over her flock. God is brooding over you. God did not author any of this, but God authored salvation and wholeness through this storm. Remember, in the middle of a storm, Jesus chose to take a nap. We talked about that last week. In the middle of a storm, Jesus, when he was woken, said, they said to him, Master, don't you care that we perish? And Jesus responded to that storm and said, peace, be still. And today, God cares about those who are in fear. God cares about those who are in sick. God cares about those who are in unrest and afraid. And Jesus says to you today, peace, be still. John 10.10 10 is a very simple answer to a problem that we've got right now. The Bible says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus has come to give life and life in abundance. That abundant life means a life that God would live. You know, when we say the Lord's Prayer, as it would be in heaven, let it so be on this earth. And you need to think about this. With what is going on, is that taking place in heaven? It's not. So we have a covenant right to be able to say, peace, be still. Go with me, if you would, to Matthew 14. Verse 22, again, another boat situation, but another peaceful situation and a situation where Jesus rescues right in the middle of the storm. Jesus made his disciples in verse 22, get into a boat, Matthew 14. And they got into a boat and he said, let's go to the other side. 
and he sent the multitudes away. And when he went up on the mountain to be by himself to pray, evening came and he was alone there. But the boat was in the middle of the sea being tossed by waves, for the winds were contrary. Contrary, just like right now. And Jesus was in the fourth watch of the night and walking on the sea. And when his disciples saw him, they were troubled. And they said, it's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, be of good cheer, for it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if you would command me to come, I would come to you on the water. And Jesus immediately said, come. And when Peter got out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous and he began to be afraid and he began to sink and he cried out saying, Lord, save me. Think about that for just a second. First of all, I'm struck by the fact that Jesus immediately in the middle of the storm said, be of good cheer. It is I be not afraid. He is so much more than mother hen. He is so much more than a hen that would brood over little chicks. But Jesus is saying, I'm your answer. Be not afraid. You've got to cry out and just simply trust him. Then he said, he said, Lord, if it's you, bid me come. And immediately Jesus said, come. I challenge you today, when you're going through this storm of life and you wonder which end is up and you're calling on the name of the Lord, he immediately is reaching out his hand to save you. He immediately is reaching out his hand to save you and deliver you from this noisome pestilence that we read earlier, this arrow that flies by day and the terror that flies by night. God sent his son to the cross to pay a huge price for you so that if you would simply reach out your hand and say, Lord... I'm afraid if, if it's you bid me come and Jesus says come come under me unto me all you who are labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest then he said immediately he said come notice he began to walk on water many people make fun of Peter because they well he began to sink because it got into doubt at least he began to walk on water if you don't think that's quite a feat, I dare you to try your fill your bathtub tonight and try and walk on water but it says that as long as he focused on Jesus he was safe. It was when he started to look at the storm that he began to sink. And even in that, the minute he cried out to Jesus, Jesus was right there to rescue him. When you step out and you fall, when you step out and you begin to sink, when you step out and wonder which end is up, as long as you cry out unto the Lord, he immediately is there to pick you up. He began to cry out, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand, caught him and said, "You, uh, oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? In this hour of need, Romans 3, 4 says, let God be true and every man a liar. We've got to let the word of God be true. Even though we can't explain everything going on in a circumstance, know that if you put your trust in the ever living, loving arms of Jesus, if you trust him and believe that he will brood over you, if you keep your focus on him and know that the noisome pestilence, that you will be delivered from that. If you speak to your storm, remember he did say, go to the other side. I wanted to mention this because last week we said, when Jesus said to his disciples, let's get in the boat and go to the other side. I don't think the headlines were ever going to read. Jesus didn't make it to the other side. You will make it to the other side. I worked for a, a gentleman, uh, many watching this today may even know, it was John Stamm, and he was rebuilding the old Syracuse Hotel in Waterford. And I remember that place had been burnt out and destroyed many in many ways, and we worked for uh, a long time. People said he had patience of an iceberg. But I remember John would say, every morning, we shall overcome. And I want to encourage you today, we shall overcome. We will get through this storm. We need to stay under the shadow of the Almighty. And the Bible says, we will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my strength. If you haven't got serious with God, I challenge you today. Take this time to call upon the name of the Lord. The word says that you shall be saved. When you begin to make him your first place, you'll be amazed how the peaceful circumstances will begin to surround you. And if at times you do start to sink, you simply cry out and know that Jesus is right there. I want to pray for you today, and I want you to connect with us. One of the things I should say uh, at the beginning of this video, or I, I didn't think of it, but like or subscribe. Go on to Carl Allen on YouTube, and uh, we need to get 100 subscribers, I believe, to continue with a YouTube channel. But I challenge you to do that. And today, I'm believing 
right now that peace will calm in this storm. Father, as we agree in prayer, Lord, for anyone that is desperate, Father God, for anyone that is seeking peace, for anyone that is seeking comfort, your word says you are the God of all comfort. And we, we speak life right now. We speak peace to this storm right now. And I thank you that you will cover us with your feathers. You will cover us that we will stay into the shadow of the Almighty. And I thank you in Jesus' name that we shall overcome. Amen and amen. Thank you. Tune in next time.